Yo, 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 what's up, man? It's your man, Darwin Price, man. All the way from St. Louis to H-Town. Thanks to all my supporters. Just wrapped up a dope interview with my boy, The Kill. You're watching Real Deal with The Kill right here, baby. Oh, I'm back. It's been so long. It's been so long. It's been uh, almost three months since I did the show, and I feel like I let a lot of my people down, let a lot of RDWA fans down since I've been gone. Man, I feel, man, I feel like Deep Price right now. I feel like Don who I got on the show right now. I feel like... I've been so hungry to get back in the studio for so long. Like, he been so hungry to get back in the ring. You get what I'm saying? And it's been a lot on my mind. A lot. It's been a lot going on the past three months, but since Sunday, it's been a lot going on. And we're going to dedicate this show to Nipsey Hussle because I want to start the show talking about that. And, D. Price, do you mind if I talk I about mind, it? I man. Because this yeah, show's about you. But just hey, let me know if I get the cue to talk about Nipsey. That was one of the idols for our culture. I mean, of course, I'm down to talk about that, you know? So we're going to talk about that. And it's it's been weighing on my mind for so long because, like I said, I haven't did a show in three months. Definitely. Might shake off a little rust. But we're going to get back in the swing of things because this, what occurred, what took place Sunday evening was something that hit my generation. Because like I said, I wasn't I wasn't around when Pac and Biggie died. Yeah. I was three years old and four years old. So we couldn't relate. I couldn't relate to that. You know what I'm saying? I was yeah. too young. I grew up knowing about the situation, but I didn't have that feel, that impact. Most definitely, definitely. With but with Nipsey, I just started jamming Nipsey Hustle last year. If a victory left. I'm not gonna sit here and lie, I was a big Nipsey Hustle fan. But when that album came out, I was a guy that said, Look, this is the album of the year. Him and J Rock. You know what I'm saying? And what took place Sunday was like, look, two things happened to me. Duke loses, five minutes later, Nipsey got shot. You get what I'm saying? And when it happened, I was stunned. I had a dream about it Sunday night. Had a dream about it Sunday night. I couldn't stop th talking about it. Couldn't stop thinking about it. Yeah. Monday, same way. I couldn't stop thinking about it. I couldn't stop talking about it. I got over it a little bit yesterday. And... And I'm not the only one that's talking about that, too. Right. I'm not the only one that had that feeling. People said it feels different, like Joe Budden, Charlemagne. And they was in the Tupac Big era. A lot of older guys saying this one hits different. And I'm the, type, I'm the guy that's going to say this. Nipsey was one of the shocking deaths in rap history. But now that I think about it some more, I think this is not only the most shocking death in rap history, I think this is the most shocking death in modern music history next to Lena. The only reason why I say that, and I don't want to analyze Diff. I don't want to sound like I'm analyzing it. Agreed. But when I say it's the most shocking and it, and it has that, that, that factor to it, that random factor, it's because both Selena's situation and Nipsey was uncontrollable. And what I mean by that is this. Pac fought in the lobby at, in, in Vegas for the Tyson fight. Yeah. He went out in the lobby and fought. He was reckless. He got shot at Quad Studios before. He got shot in the car with Suge Knight. It was bad. Still sad. But if you ask the older people around that time, they're going to sit here and say, if you ask them, was you shocked when Pac died? No, I wasn't shocked because he was reckless. Yeah, Uncontro so. A controllable situation. He let get out of hand. Biggie, he went to L.A. He was told not to go to L.A. That was a hot zone for him at that time. East Coast, West Coast, a lot of things going on. He didn't have to go to L.A. What happened? He passed. Pimp C drugs. Selena got shot by her manager. That's uncontrolled. You can't do nothing about that. Nobody never expected that. But Nipsey, Nipsey Hustle, in his own hood, where he grew up, the same place he met Long and London at, uncontrollable. Dude walked up to him, known as a snitch. The dude name was Shitty Cuz, D-Price. His name was uh, Shitty Cuz. He was shitty, huh? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Known snitch, known informant to the law enforcement. And I'm not trying to say law enforcement was involved. I'm not into that. I don't think they was involved. You know what I'm saying? No, I don't think they were involved. They was not involved Everybody at all. Want to assume what they want to assume. And another thing. But you can't stop that. I'm tired of people saying that it's about this Dr. CB bullshit. It ain't got Don't to do with let that, Dr. CB live on. Like they say, he probably told the dude to move off his storefront, called him a snitch in front of some some guys, you know what I'm saying, in front of a few guys. Dude felt like played or belittled and was like, you know what, I'm about to kill this man, you know what I'm 
I'm saying? Ain't no telling the guy was high or not. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no telling what was going on. Right. But I'm pretty sure it was a group around or some guys around and nigga try to be little to you in front of everybody. Man, get away from my store, you little snitch. Like Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So And they both were rolling six. He just happened to say it to the wrong person, man. You know what I'm saying? It was the wrong wrong time, dog. Like, I mean, nobody ever expected that to happen. You know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure he didn't expect that to happen either, you know? Not at all. And I think too at the same time. We as black people, because I don't want people to say, oh, look at these black people, black on black crime again. Don't associate all black yeah. people with that one yeah. incident. Most definitely. That was that one dude. Yeah. We as black people had nothing to do with that. But as black people, we need to stop trying to say it was a conspiracy theory towards yeah. Doc. Oh, Nipsey Hussle Doc. You know how disrespectful that is to Nip- Nipsey's legacy and his family and friends to say you're going to tie that to some damn cure to AIDS and he got a documentary coming out. Honestly, he got a documentary coming out. And he said, hey, if I die for this, and this is going to cause more problems. It's going to cause more gonna problems. Cause more problems in the world, man. Like when people like, it was a, a police, a black and white. It wasn't really a, even a black and white thing. He just, it was just, uh, he was he was dealing with a, a messed up guy. You know what I'm saying? Like, dude was just a messed up dude, you know? That's and what it was. I don't know. That's crazy, man. He was very influential for our culture. You know what I'm saying? He was an in- influential rapper for the culture, man. We needed somebody like him. He was a leader, man. He was somebody who was different. And he spoke volume into our people, you know what I'm saying? Like, and we don't have too many rappers that do that nowadays. No. You know, it's only a handful of rappers that really send a message through their music. And I feel like he was somebody that sent the message through his music and was somebody who wanted to help the culture and give back to the community, which was um, which was real good for for um, for us, for the culture, for the world, for for hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's crazy, man. Like like everybody say, he was a Tupac of this era, man. And he yeah. Got, he got gunned down by by a scrub, man. You know what I'm saying? By somebody who who was who was nothing, man. Shitty cuz, man. You know Shitty cuz, dog. dog. Like, Dusty Negro. That's Dusty what he was. Negro, dog, Dusty real. Negro. You know what I'm saying? We had nothing to do with that. And it and it's, it is just sucks that we keep going to this doctor. And and it was crazy because everybody on social media was saying it was this yeah. conspiracy. I knew it wasn't that shit. And I'm into I I try to connect dots when people die yeah. or something's going on in the ward. I'm that type of guy. Most definitely. But when it comes to this situation. We got to just own up and say, man, look, you got to be real with yourself. Let's just say I make it big ones. And I haven't, I'm not from the hood. Yeah. I'm from the small, I'm from the suburbs. Yeah. I grew up in Mo City, Coral Green West, but I live in Stafford right now. But you got to ask yourself, it's like, yo, when you get big time, do you, can you keep it real? Or do you, you just got to fuck around and be like, look, I don't want to, I know how y'all did Nipsey. I don't want to give back to my own community. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because you got to watch your back. Because that's gonna affect us most definitely. You got to watch. You got to watch your surroundings too, as a person, man. You know that that situation really opened my eyes to like, because I was at a point in my life where I was like, you know what, man? Uh, it was people that would be envious of me that was around me. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, damn, why they don't support me? You know what I'm saying? Why? Right. Why don't I get support from this person? And like, I always like just wanted that support from these people, but man. You got to watch who support you, man, because there's a lot of people out here that, that become envious of you when you're doing good for yourself. Right. Like, them people that you do want to support you that's envious of you be the ones that try to take you out or kill you, bro. Like, it's crazy how it be somebody close to you. That it's knows us. You. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, our, it's, it's, it's our, our culture, own man. people. Our culture like crabs in the bucket, man. You know what I'm saying? It's hard to support each other. You know what I'm saying? It's, we barely get support. And then definitely when we're trying to motivate each other, talk about some positive, you know, the, the, the generation now don't want to hear none of that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They don't want to hear no positive shit. They want to hear about somebody getting killed. Somebody fighting, somebody, you know, some drama, bro. Drama sales nowadays, sex and drama sales, bro. But, like, the 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 rappers who speak volume into people, man, it's hard for them to blow. You know what I'm saying? I don't know why. It's just how the generation is. But, man, if we could support each other, man, I feel like our culture would be so much stronger, man. It's like trying to trying to choke a chicken trying to get people to support you, man, for real. Like, it is. It's, it's been a hard process when we trying to get to the top in this boxing. You know what I'm saying? I went to a HBCU, Grambling State University, um, and I'm still, I'm, I'm an alpha too, you know what I'm saying? But I still barely even get back in, to be honest with you. But I'm building my own brand. That's a part of the process. I understand that, you know what I'm saying? And I know who was here when I started. Right. But uh, I know all of that's going to change for me when I when I prove to the world and prove to myself that I am going to be a world champ, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I am somebody. Like, I'm a boss yeah. outside of boxing. I'm a boss inside the ring too, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I'm a boss up regardless. Like, I'm going to make money outside and inside the ring what people don't know. Like, mm-hmm. I'm always working, always grinding to try to get better. Yeah. Anybody I'm around, I'm always motivating them to do better. And anybody that's in my circle, I'm supporting them. Right. Uh, I'm all about motivating people, man. I want to see everybody succeed and definitely my people. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't the type of guy to hate on nobody. I ain't the type of guy to want nothing to steal from nobody, man. 
I just want to see everybody successful. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm the type of guy that support people, you know, and that's a that's a good thing and a bad thing too. You know what I'm saying? Because nice guys finish last, so and build myself and get in my zone. And like right now, man, I'm more focused than I ever been in my life. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm in shape, like you know what I'm saying, like I never been before, bro. Like, yeah. and I'm ready to dominate. No, talk about that injury because you say you had the patella. I mean, you talking about the injury before, yeah, and and it happened during sparring. Like, how was the recovery process when you had that injury? It was tough, bro. You know what I'm saying? It was more mentally tough than anything. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I was I was getting ready to for, for a big fight, for a TV fight. That was probably going to, you know what I'm saying, change my career a little bit, give me a little yeah. change in my career. Um, It was stressful in the beginning, you know what I'm saying, because I was going through some other stuff, too. Uh, It felt lonely in the beginning. I felt lonely, dog, because I, I couldn't do nothing. I couldn't go nowhere. I was at the crib. Didn't really had no help for real, you know what I'm saying? Didn't hear from nobody, you know what I'm saying? But my, my intermediate people, like my family, my mom and shit, you know, like just the regular people, you know what I'm saying? But everybody that was supposedly supporting me before that, right when I was about to have a fight coming up, everybody went MIA. I right. even lost a couple of sponsors too, you know what I'm saying? Like they gave up on me because I know it was business. But yeah. it was one person, you know what I'm saying, that gave me another opportunity, man, and just blessed me, dog. His name was, uh, his name is Muhammad Aziz. That's one of my... Biggest sponsors that I got now, he with Abraham Watkins Law Firm. Like, I ain't have nothing, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I had lost it all. I went through a little separation, got my kids separated from me, was going through a divorce. And this guy, knowing that I was injured, knowing that I wouldn't fight no time soon, it would probably be a year or two before I fought, became one of my sponsors, bro. Signed a, signed a deal with me, man. It became one of my sponsors and backed me up, bro. Like, and that was the way that I was able to, like, kind of, kind of survive a little bit because the only way I made money was if I it was if I fought and through my sponsors you know and this was one guy that kind of changed everything for me and put me around the right people uh so that's why I really talk heavily about this guy man because he really made a difference in my life and my my career um Mr. Muhammad Aziz he's a personal injury lawyer one of the top lawyers in the world and uh thanks to all my other sponsors too I'm not gonna downplay them but this guy just really came in in, in an important time in my life and um Yo. Like really looked out for me, and it, it wasn't even my people, man. The guy, the guy that came out and looked out for me is a guy from Pakistan, man. It wasn't even my people that helped me. It was a guy from Pakistan. Damn, you feel me? Yo, that's, we like, like about most of my people don't, don't, don't never, don't never look out for me. Like anybody yeah. that's in position to help me, bro, don't never look out for me, bro. Like it'd yeah. be hard. It'd be like trying to, you know what I'm saying? But but I do have a lot of support. You know what I'm saying? I do get a lot of support, and I do thank the support. I I do. I'm, I am thankful for the support that I do get because I'm not gonna downplay. The support that I do get, but I feel like I should definitely have a lot more support. You know, going to HBCU, graduate from there, being an alpha. You feel you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. But uh, hey, you know what I'm saying? People will see, people will see. Um, they'll come around sooner than later. You know what I'm saying? Right. But I don't forget nothing. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But I do, like I said, I appreciate the support that I do get and the people that do support me. But yeah. it's it's a tough process. You know what I'm saying? Being black young man trying to make it, man, trying to trying to get to the top at what you do. You know what I'm saying? Without Without doing, um, kind of, kind of doing dirty stuff, you know what I'm saying? Selling drugs, uh, doing what you got to do to get to the next level, uh, yeah. trying to do stuff the positive way, so you can, you know what I'm saying? When you got two kids to feed, you try not to go down that path, you know what I'm saying? Because you know yeah. what that come with, you know the consequences yeah. and stuff that that come with. You got to be willing to die when you take that path, you know what I mean? Right. I've been there before, so I just, I've been trying to do everything positive, man. Trying to be a motivating person. Trying to be a leader. I want to be the people's champ. I want to motivate people, man. I want to be that fighter that motivate everybody. You know, I want to be yeah. that, that that guy that like everybody else is doing dumb shit. Um, just all about drama, doing crazy shit. I know it's a fighting sport, but I if I ever get into a position to be a leader or somebody that can influence other people, I want to motivate people. And definitely right. my people, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. we won't have enough leaders out here, man. Not we won't right. have enough leaders definitely for the culture. So that's my position that I want to put myself in, you know what I'm saying? So I believe in motivating each other and by us sticking together and supporting each other it can make the culture so much stronger, you know what I'm saying, as a whole. But uh, that's just my opinion about everything. So, Do you think your chip is bigger now on your shoulder than it once was when you first started? For sure. My yeah. chip, much bigger on my shoulder. I feel like I know I, I shouldn't have to uh, feel like I got something to prove to people, man. I'm saying, but I should only have something to prove to myself. But I feel like I got so much to prove, bro. Like so many people doubted me, bro. So many people, like I'm telling you, man, like 
just just like it's people out here, man, that just want to make stuff hard for you for no reason, dog. They just don't like you for no reason. Even if you're a good dude, even if you want to see them successful, bro, it's people that just want to make life harder for you for no reason at all, dog. You know, and it seems like I've been running across that a whole lot. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if it's a lot of people, but in our culture, you know, it's just so hard to get people to support you, bro. It's so, so hard to get people on one accord and one team, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. that's been my, you know, I, I got a big chip on my shoulder, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, because when I, when I was hurt, man, everybody went MIA, bro. Everybody went MIA, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, everybody went MIA, like straight up. I lost, I got separated from my daughters and everything. You know what I'm saying? That made... That really, that really hit hit home right there too. You know, what I'm saying yeah. my my daughters went to a whole another state on me, and I'm 13. I was away from my kids. Like, I was with my kids every day. You know, what I'm saying this is who I grind for. That's who I grind for is my daughters because I want the best for them. And I right. know if I fail, I don't have nothing to go back to. And I'm like one of the only people on my side of the family that they really got to depend on. Uh, really, that they really see. They don't really see my side of the family like that. I'm like one of the only people left in my side of the family that really like. That spend a lot of time with my girls and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. I don't know why it's like that, but it's just it's just like that. You know what I'm saying? Like my family everywhere. You know. Yeah. But uh, I don't know, man. I got a big chip on my shoulder. I got a lot to prove, man. I feel like um, I still got a lot of work to do, and yeah. I'm just ready to show the world, and I'm ready to be somebody to influence the culture as well. You know what I'm right. saying? So, for real. I'm gonna just advertise them real fast. You know, trying to move up in the game. Okay. Trying to get sponsors. Wow. Yeah, I ain't had no sponsors. Oh, yeah. I ain't no sponsors. And uh, since you start this, show, my first sponsor, you know, Already, so I can hit this sponsor. Definitely. So, um, <clears throat> been in the car wreck, going through a divorce, or if you need someone to look over your contract, you got written. But don't look any further than Petite Law Firm. Petite Law Firm can handle all that and much more with just one phone call: 281-227-7883. Again, that's 281-227. 7883 Carpetite Law Firm. But back to what we were saying about the recovery and the chip on your shoulder. Yeah. This fight coming up April 13th. Minneapolis, Minnesota. First fight in the year. Definitely. Actually, it'll be, I fight April 13th and that'll be exactly a year. I exactly. told my Patilla tell attendant last year, April 13th. It was Friday the 13th. Was this yeah. on purpose to fight on this day? No, man. It just happened, bro. It's crazy, man, how God work, bro. Yeah. Like, I fight April 13th, man, exactly a year from the day that I tore my Patel attendant up. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Uh, and it usually take, like, at least a year longer for a Patel attendant to heal, heal, but I did what I was supposed to do. Mm. Stayed focused, grinded, never gave up. While I was down, I, I worked out. I still did what I needed to do. I stayed focused. I stayed motivated. I stayed positive, bro. I kept my eye on the light. You know what I'm saying? Like, I came too far to just give up like that. You know what I'm saying? I, it was times that I got discouraged. It was times that I was just like stressed or down, down bad. You know what I'm saying? But I couldn't. I, I, I never lost light. I never lost focus on the light. I never, I never took took my eye off the light, dog. And I know, you know what I'm saying? I, I ain't come this far for nothing. So. And who are you fighting on this fight? Uh, I'm fighting a guy named Luis Flores. Yeah. Is he? <clears throat> so I know how to box. Now that I've been around you, Austin, yeah. Keith, and Ralph, now yeah. I know how the sparring work. I know how it go. Definitely. So, to get prepared for this fight, I knew you say you had you had to switch an opponent. Yeah, the yeah, opponent, yeah. One of the opponents backed out yeah. of a quote-unquote injury or whatever. Yeah. They got a new fight, new fighter. Did you have to spar different? Did you have to train Man, different? Bro, I I, to be honest with you, whoever they put in front of me, bro, going to get the business, bro. Like, I don't worry about who they going to put in front of me. I prepare yeah. for any kind of style. I yeah. mean, I work with anybody, bro. Like, you a southpaw, orthodox, wild fighter, strong fighter, whatever, bro. Like, I'm prepared for whatever they put in front of me. Like, you just got to be that type of fighter, bro. I'm a chess player. Right. Like, so I, I'm prepared for whatever. If I if I got a, if I got somebody who fast a boxer, then I got a brawler. You know what I'm saying? Boxer, brawler, brawler, boxer. If I got somebody who's strong coming at me, I'm a boxer. It's common sense. Well, I mean, crazy thing is, man, boxing all about, like, mindset, dog. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, yeah. it's like I said, it's about playing chess, man. It ain't uh, about it ain't about the toughest man win. Like, it's really an art. You know what I'm saying? It's really about hitting and not get hit. Like, right. like, like the GOAT Mayweather said. You know what I'm saying? Like, he, he mastered the art of boxing, bro. Like, for real. Like, it's all about strategy in there. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you got to just learn, know how to strategize. And as a fighter, if you want to be the best, one of the best in the game, you got to learn how to adapt. Because they're going to do that sometimes. They're going to switch out your opponent. 
they gonna do all of that. I mean, you don't have time to worry about that, bro. Yeah. You just got to be ready for whatever they whatever they throw at you. You know. Did I just hear goats for Mayweather? Yeah, I like Mayweather, man. He the goat, bro. The goat. He the goat of our era, man. Oh, okay, okay. He the goat of our era of boxing yeah. of our era. It okay. was. It, I mean, it's a lot of goats in boxing, man. You got yeah. you got Roy Jones. You got him and Tommy Hearns. You got Muhammad Ali. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You got. You got Sugar Ray Robinson, Sugar Ray Leonard. Yeah, it's a Lewis. lot of goats of their they era, bro. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But that era over. It's a new era. I mean, yeah. hey, we just speaking facts, man. You know, Mayweather is the goat. Yeah. And he's he's proved himself. You know what I'm saying? He came I, I, from the bottom. Give, I give people hard time to say Mayweather. He came from the bottom, bro. I mean, like yeah. you can't compare him to an era from 10 years ago, man. You know what I'm saying? It's a yeah. whole new era. It's a, it, LeBron is the goat of our era right now. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like. We we not living when Jordan was living, so we don't know. You know what yeah. I'm saying? He was probably the goat back then, but honestly, we don't know. We don't know. know. We don't know, but numbers don't lie. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Numbers don't lie. You see LeBron numbers. Yeah. Come on now. You know what I'm saying? Like numbers don't lie. Yeah. So but yeah. What with this fight coming up, I know with the rankings, it goes everywhere. It's like you can be twenty five on one week. You haven't fight in three months. You go down to like 29, 30. Yeah, yeah. Have you checked? Do you be checking that? Man, I, last time I checked, I was ranked top 15 in the U.S. right now. I knew it was but, up there. I was told. But um, somebody else told me. They took me off, man. They took me off the rankings because I got injured. So I was uh, ineligible. You know what I'm saying? Until I proved that I was he- healthy and healed up. So I don't know where I'm going to be after this fight. You know what I mean? But so I'm where you at sure. currently? I, I'm not up there. So, right. you, so once you get hurt, they just... I mean, I'm not on there, but when I fight, I'll be back on it. I'm pretty sure I'll be in the top 15 still. In in the world, in your division? or In the the country right now. I think I'm in, like, the top 30, top 40 in the the, the world. And what's your division? Uh, Junior Waterway, 140. But I'm really really number one, though. Like, I'm really the best, though. People just don't know that right now. Who's in in your division as the belt right now? Uh, Regis, uh, Regis Prograce, Minnie Mouse. Mm, What's his name? Mighty Mouse, Minnie Mouse. So it's kind of like up in the air is who's really the the best in the world to because no, you got the re- best. Yeah. I'm the best, bro. I'm telling you, bro. I'm yeah. the best, man. I'm telling you, hey, man. I'm telling you, man. No, nah, yeah, I'm no. I don't look. even like to talk though. I don't like I don't even like to talk like that, bro. I like to let my hands do the talking, man. We're going to be we're going to talk in this podcast. I like to let my hands do the we're gonna, talking. We're going to talk in this podcast. I, I ain't even a talker <laughs> like that, man. Yeah. I just do it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I just do it, man. I just I'm from the show me state, bro. Now, I'm I'm going to say something. When I first seen you, yeah. It wasn't the time I seen you last month. At uh the gym downtown, yeah, it was you. You didn't see me. You was sparring somebody. Me and Monday was uh we was there. We we was there for Keys. We met Austin, and then yeah, all of a boy. sudden, Austin said, "Man, you need to check this dude out right here, Darn Price." You Am you was I him at the bro. time. So then you was sparring some dude. I said, "Man, who in the hell is this?" Yeah. You almost I ain't gonna say you almost killed Monday, obviously, but it was like, damn, it was supposed to be sparring. Yeah, but it turns like a brawl. Like, you just punish this dude. I don't know who you was sparring at the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. But I said, No God, mercy, baby. Damn, no mercy. sparring? I mean, shit, dude trying to probably just practice. What no, if he had, go, a, what if he had a fight? Sparring, bro. What it if he had a fight, dog? He had a fight next yeah, month. When you get in that ring, bro, you got you know what you're getting yourself into, bro. Now, I can understand he was a little kid or something, but if you get in there with a man, bro, some men get in there and be like, we're going to chill, and they still trying to knock your head off. Like, I'm going to chill on you, bro, but if you get in there trying to knock my head off, bro, I'm going to knock your head off, bro. Yeah. And I'm going to chill. I'm going to chill and help you and work with you. But if you get in there trying to get one off, I'm going to, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. at the end of the day, we still men getting in there swinging on each other, bro. Like, yeah. I mean, how nice could you be when you sparring somebody? That is true. How, how nice could you be when you getting hit in the face by somebody else, bro? Yeah. Like, even if it's a tap. You don't like getting even tapped on the cheek right now by your boy. You'll probably feel some type of way if you get smacked <laughs> on the face. You know what I'm saying? Even if, it, even if it's light, you're going to feel like, Oh, like, what's up, bro? You want to yeah. get your lick back, dog? You know yeah. what I'm saying? But it's a sport, bro. When you get in yeah. that ring, you I'm a whole nother animal, dog. I can't. I, I'm too nice for boxing, dog. I don't, I don't animal. like fighting, dog. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't like hitting. I'm a nice like dude, too. Drum, you I'm know a nice what I'm dude, too, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm a nice dude, too. You know what I'm saying? But when you get in that ring, you got to have a totally different mentality. What made you start boxing? Man, just growing up, man. You know what I'm saying? Getting into trouble. Hanging around the wrong people, dog. And I ended up. One of my boys named Lamont, he ended up, uh, like, we used to box, man, over in the hood, like, over in Northwoods, man. And he used yeah. to beat me up every time, bro. Where you originally from? I'm from St. Louis. Okay. Yeah, yeah. He used to beat me every time, bro. Like, I used to, like, and I, I used to always wonder, like, how he beat me. Because I used to, like, before I met him, I had, like, two pair of boxing gloves that I got from this old man. 
Like one day I lived in this uh, neighborhood called Berkeley. I was walking down the street helping him clean. I helped him clean out his garage. I seen two pair of boxing gloves in there, and he he gave me the two pair of boxing gloves for helping him clean out his garage. I had never fought a day in my life, never boxed or nothing. But I took the two pair of boxing gloves, put them in my book bag, always kept them with me, and just started boxing dudes, like asking them did they want to box. Like, yeah. And we would just box on the streets at school during the games on Saturday. And, like, uh, I was dropping dudes, dog. Like, I was, and I never boxed in my life, never did none of that, but I was dropping grown men, bro. I was, like, 14 yeah. years old, you know what I'm saying? And, like, uh, one day I met my match at school, bro. At, 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 um, we was at a game. It was a big old circle. I was boxing this dude named Mike Roper, bro. He bloody my nose and everything, dog. Like, yeah. And I was like, dang. Afterwards, he told me that he boxed. You know what I'm saying? That's when I ended up mo- switching neighborhoods, moving to Northwoods because I got put out of school. I missed the whole year of school my sophomore year for inciting the ride when I went to McClure North. You know what I'm saying? That's I don't talk about that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And then uh, I moved to Northwoods with, with my dad. You know what I'm saying? When he when, when I switched, because uh, he ended up moving, I ended up switching school districts. But uh, he, um, I used to fight this dude named Lamont, man, all the time, bro. And he used to beat me in the gloves. And come to find out, he told me that he boxed. And one day he took me to the gym with him. You know what I'm saying? And, like, ever since I fell in love with boxing, bro, the first week I was sparring, but I sparred with some dude. One of my – matter of fact, I sparred with a guy that I found out was my cousin. It was bloody, bro. Like, we was both bloody. It was, like, in there trying to kill each other, just street fighting, bro. Right. And, like, ever since then I kept coming back. You know what I'm saying? Because when you box, bro, when you've been in boxing for so long, it's guys that's going to come in the gym and they going to, like, they going to spar. If they get beat up, a lot of them don't even come back, bro. Or uh, if they, like, have a bloody match or get a bloody nose, a lot of them don't come back. Yeah. But some of them guys, like, some guys, like, every little once in a while come back and want to fight. And, want you know, they got heart. It's like, yo, I'm going to learn how to get better. I don't care if I keep getting beat up. And then they get better. You know what I'm saying? I was yeah. that guy that was I, – I really didn't get beat up in the gym because I was, I was good. You know what I'm saying? But I don't know, man. I was just that, that good, humble guy, bro, that just didn't like fighting for real. But yeah. – if I had to fight, I would. You know what I'm saying? But um, I don't know, man. I got into boxing and just fell in love with it. I was yeah, hanging around yeah. the wrong people, bro. Fighting, fighting um on the streets and shit, man. Like, and one day, my boys was like, we was at the bowling alley. My boys was like, dog, go punch him, bro. I'm like, <laughs> all right, I'm about to go knock him out. Some dude they was beefing with, and yeah. like it was a grown ass man, but I was like 14, bro. And I was about to walk up to him and punch him. It was we was at this party and it was a fight going on, so everybody was in the parking lot. I walked up to the dude about to punch him. He pulled out a gun on me, bro, and Ooh. pointed it at my face, bro. And I was like, damn. I ain't even know what to say, bro. I was just like, my bad. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was a grown man. I'm a kid, bro. Yeah. You know, I just thank God that I didn't get shot or killed or nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. that kind of changed my mentality a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Because I could have lost my life. I could have got killed. I had homeboys that got shot, that got killed. You know what I'm saying? Like, my cousin, R.I.P. Preston Freeman. You know what I'm saying? He was he was gunned down at a nightclub. You know what I'm saying? That was kind of like my inspiration to go pro. You know what I mean? That wasn't my inspiration as an amateur, but as when I went professional, he was my inspiration, bro, after I graduated from college. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Because after all of that, I ended up, after that situation with the gun being pulled out on me, getting put out of school, uh, I missed the whole year of school. I had time to think about everything. I ended up switching school districts and went to Normandy School District. You know what I'm saying? Ran into a security guard named, named uh, Miss Plummer. You know what I'm saying? She used to be on everybody's ass, bro, like, <laughs> and she was like, why don't you come run cross country? I'm like, black people don't run cross country. Yeah, like, come on, dog. Shit, like, dog. what I look like running cross country? Yeah, unless they force every day, you to do every, every day she kept on asking me, bro. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to run cross country. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm going to run. And then uh, I ended up running, bro, and I was good. Like, I was real good at it. Like, yeah. I ended, like, I was so good, bro. It ended up changing my life, and I ended up getting on the right track, getting good grades, bro. Got focused, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I ended up receiving a scholarship to college, bro. I never thought I'd go to school, bro. Like, my daddy used to always tell me, man, you're going to end up um, in jail or dead, bro, like hanging around the people you hang around. And I ended up getting a full-ride scholarship to college, bro. I had so many offers, bro. I was one of the top track runners in the country, dog. Like, one of the top. I won AAU every year, man. I was the first black person in the history of Missouri to win. Um, my senior year, I won state in the mile, two mile, and the 800. First black person in, my, in the history of Missouri to do that. Hasn't mm. been done, and it was it was done, like, back in 1982, bro, by somebody. Yeah. And it wasn't by a black guy. You know what I'm saying? Like, I had a lot of support when it came to track, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I brought excitement to track. Like, I was that guy from the hood that used to, like, roll out in distance, bro. Yeah. Like, for so, real. So if you didn't box, you would have been easily, like, doing track. I right would have been easily doing track, like, for sure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, because I went, um, 
I tried to go to the Olympic trials. I was ranked six in the country. I had like, man, I, I had started fighting when I was like 15, bro. I stopped at like 17 and a half, but I had 120 fights within three years, bro. I had 120 fights within three years. I was fighting every day. I mean, I was fighting every time. I don't know, but I was I was fighting a lot, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like I was getting trained by Frank Henderson, which is my cousin too, man. That's one of my, and Jim Howell, man. My, that's them my people, bro, who got me started, got me where I am today. And uh, my high school track too, uh, Smotherman, the Anthony Smotherman, man, one of my inspirations as well that kind of yeah. motivated me to go to Grambling State University when I did receive a full ride scholarship. But uh, like I said, I, Ended up receiving a full ride scholarship to Grambling, man. Went off to Grambling, bro. And everybody always gave me a hard time, dog. <laughs> you know, when you a good dude or you good at everything you do, everybody want to beat you, bro. Right. Everybody want to be where you want to be. Or everybody want to prove they self. Yeah. Everybody want to prove that they better than you, bro. So all my life, I always had to compete with everybody around me, dog. Like, because everybody had to, felt like they had to prove a point. It's even, it's, it, it was even people that said that Darwin Price can't punch, man. He weak, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? He ain't going to make it. He can't go pro. He can't be a professional. But look at me now, bro. I'm 13 and 0, bro. Some of the coaches used to diss me, bro, and everything. How many knockouts you got right now? I got seven knockouts. I'm 13 and 0 with seven knockouts. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. I, I, I used all of that as motivation, bro. Like, just to prove people wrong, bro. You know what I'm saying? I kept pushing all my life, all the negativity. I always try to use it as motivation and positivity to move forward in life. Because people going to hate you. Anybody. Even if you're a regular person, bro. Even if you're not an athlete. It's going to be somebody, when you're doing stuff right, bro, it's going to be somebody that don't like you for no reason. It's going to be somebody that hates you, somebody in your way, somebody giving you problems, bro. But you got to learn how to take all of that and turn it into a positive so you can stay motivated and keep moving forward for yourself. You know what I'm saying? Because if you start focusing too much energy on that, then you'll start becoming somebody else. You got to focus on you. You know what I'm saying? So, but like I was saying with that, man, a lot of people, like a lot of people doubted me, bro. A lot of people doubted me, but I'm here 13 and 0. Went off to college, man. Full ride scholarship. Had a lot of offers. Graduated in four years, bro. Got my bachelor's. You know what I'm saying? Like, had a um, I was seven time MVP of SWAC, bro. Like, I won SWAC every year. I was MVP of SWAC every year, bro. You know what I'm saying? Went to nationals. For, I mean, went to regionals for the 800 and everything, bro. Like, I was rolling. Even when I went to went my first my first day in college, everybody had heard about me. Oh, this the guy that can roll out, right? Man, some of the guys would come up to me and be like. I was like, they was like, what's up, man? You do all when you the new runner, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, man. They, uh, I was like, they called me the champ back home because they used to call me the champ, bro. Right. I wasn't trying to be eager. Or I wasn't trying to be like, that's what they do. Like, I was like, no, nah, they called me the champ, bro. Everybody right. called me the champ. I even got it tatted on me, bro. Yeah. I was like, look, everybody called me the champ back home. And niggas was looking at me like, nigga, ain't nobody calling you the champ, bro. Like, we're going to call you the champ for, right? Yeah. Rolled out. I rolled out that bounce them up. Same niggas that did say they weren't going to call for the champ came to me, shook my hand, was like, yeah. you the champ, bro. I'm going to shake around. your hand. You the champ, bro. Yeah. Like, bro, they don't call me the champ for no reason, bro. Like, I work hard, dog. Like, I, every – man, I got here from hard work, dog. Like, I ain't, I ain't took no shortcuts. You know what I'm saying? Ain't big for nothing, bro. I got here on my own, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, with the yeah. help of my mentors and everything, bro, when it when it came to keeping me mentally, mentally focused, bro. But I work hard to get here, bro. I work yeah. hard to get here, dog. Like, yeah. I work real hard, bro, because I came from nothing, dog. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. it took a lot to get here, man. Definitely being a young black guy hanging around the wrong people, man. You know, definitely coming from the hood, bro. You could get caught up with that hood lifestyle in the streets so easy, man. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, it took a lot of focus to, you know what I'm saying, kind of steer away from that life. You know what I'm saying? And, and focus on me and becoming a better man for my kids because I had a kid at 17. You know what I'm saying? So, that kind of changed my life, too. Right. But... I went off to college, bro. Graduated. One fighting in college for real. Graduated, dog. Uh, like, came back, uh, went back home, bro. Like, I had my brother had let me get a 95 Impala, bro. I really didn't have nothing, dog. Like, I had a 95 Impala with some old tags on it. The tags was expired. As soon as I graduated college, I was out one night drinking and having fun, bro. And like, and um, I wasn't even drinking actually, but I was out having a good time celebrating. I just graduated from college. I did it. I'm back in St. Louis. But believe me, my, my, my tags on my car was still out. I was like, man, I talk, call my bro. Like, can you help me get my tags fixed, dog? Because I need to get my tags fixed. Mm -hmm. I just, I was broke. I just graduated college, bro. They locked me up. Actually, I, they locked me up that night, bro. Like, they pulled me over. The police pulled me over. Um, I had my daughters in the car. They locked me up, bro. Like, it was just me and my daughters. And actually, it was my ex-wife, bro. Like, 
and they left him on the side of the road. You know what I'm saying? I got pulled over in this city called Pine Line. They pulled me over, bro, and I was locked up for like two days because I had a warrant. They said, you don't have any warrants or anything, do you? Bro, I had a warrant for peeing outside, bro. They locked me up for like two days, like put me in the orange suit and everything. Like two days ain't nothing, but it's just the purpose, bro. Y'all going to lock me up because I got a warrant for peeing outside, bro. Like sure. really? You know what I'm saying? Like, but, and then after that, man, I kind of like, things were shaky for me, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like things were shaky. I was kind of living house to house, living with my brother, living with my mama, you know. Then the mother of my kids let me open up the door, you know, for me to stay with her. You know what I'm saying? We went yeah. together, but she opened up those doors so I can live with her. And I got to end up getting on my feet, became a substitute teacher and was a security guard, bro. You know what I'm saying? And I had stopped boxing. My life was done. I ended up saving up, getting a little crib, you know what I'm saying? Renting out a house for my family, bro, because I ended up getting married. And my cousin, Preston Freeman, was boxing at the time. He was professional. And we used to keep in touch and contact, and I used to train sometimes, you know what I'm saying? And I was, like I said, um, he was in California. He went professional in, where did he go? Salinas, California. He went professional in Salinas. And he used to always call me and talk to me, you know, tell me how it was. And I was like, yo, put in the word for me, bro, because I tried to, you know, I started boxing again, bro. Like, put in the word for me, tell him to turn me pro. He was like, I will, because oh, I got you. And he used to always put in the word for me. One day I was working, bro. He called me one night, and it was so weird. He called me. It was like he came back to St. Louis. He was like, he was like, yeah, man, some stuff happened out there. But I'm like, what's up, man? Tell me. He's like, I'm going to talk to you, cuz, though. And he told me. He was like, before we get off the phone, he ain't never told me he loved me. Never, ever, bro. Never. Like, you know what I'm saying? And he was just like, I love you, cuz, though. And that kind of, like, gave me a feeling when he told me he loved me, and I just felt some type of way, bro. Mm -hmm. I was like, I love you. And, like, that night he got killed, bro. Like, he got gunned down at a nightclub. He got killed, bro. Like, trying to help somebody else. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Trying to help his boys out. He was the one that ended up getting killed. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah, that touched me, bro. You know what I'm saying? That inspired me. You know what I'm saying? And the people that he was with ended up giving me a call, like, probably like a month or two later. Maybe like two months later, I was working as a, still working as a security guard and a substitute. And I was at work, and they called me. It was like, I had just, then after I, after the house, I had got that separation from, you know, me and my family had separated. I ended up getting, a, like, a loft downtown, St. Louis. Just moved into it. All got, just bought all this furniture, everything I just bought. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And they called me when I was at work one day, and it was like, yo, you want to come to Cali? You know what I'm saying? It was like, you want to uh, turn pro and come to Cali? We'll fly you out first class. And can you get out here next week? I'm like, next week, bro? I just, I just signed my lease and everything, bro. Mm -hmm. But you know what I thought, bro? That day I had to wrestle like a psych patient, bro. Yeah. Like, and I'm like, should I just go, you know what I'm saying? How many people get the opportunity to just go pro in boxing and, like, with some right yeah. people, with the good people, bro? You I was like, get the opportunity back. Yeah, so I, I took that opportunity, bro. They flew me out next week. I, I gave away all my furniture, broke my lease, everything, bro. And I ain't never looked back since. I stayed in Cali for a year. I ain't never looked back since. I'm 13 and 0 now. Uh, it been some bumps in the road, you know what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. I kept pushing, you know what I'm saying? I went out there yeah. by myself, all fate, you know what I'm saying, with a family that I ain't even know. You know what I'm saying? And stuff got shaky out there. I kind of saw what my cousin was talking about. But uh, I ain't never looked back, bro. They tried to break me too, but I ain't never looked back. I'm still here. I'm 13 and 0. Um, I'm still positive. I'm still living my life. I'm doing real good for myself. And they can't break me, dog. Can't nothing break me. So how'd you get to Houston? Man, my uncle, man. I got an uncle that yeah. I call Big Unk named Richard Moore, bro. Yeah. That that called me all throughout, throughout college, bro. Like, I met him through my best friend. I call him my unk. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. my, my best friend I met my freshman year in college. But we call him Big Unk, bro. He called me damn near every day, or if not every week in college, trying to get me to go pro in boxing. And I kept telling him, I'm done boxing, bro. He's like, bro, you need to be going pro. He used to buy, like, I used to get annoyed by him, bro. Like, he was like, dog, you need to go pro, bro. Go pro. And I was like, he would, if he couldn't get in touch with me, bro, he would call my family and try to get in touch with me, bro. Yeah. And, like, he stayed on me for four years straight. Mm -hmm. And, like, after I went to Cali and told him I needed him to help me get another manager, he helped me. He uh looked around, sent my tape out to people, ended up reaching out to Ronnie Shields, one of the world fame trainers out here in Houston, sent the tape to him, and I ended up coming out here training and stuff. And, like, Ronnie Shields liked me. So, thanks to him, I got in the door with Ronnie Shields, and Ronnie Shields got me in the door with Al Heyman. You feel mm -hmm. me? So, thanks to Ronnie Shields for that, you know. 
And, um, Are you still under uh, Al Heyman? I'm still under Al Heyman. Okay. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Al Heyman, a good dude, man, one of the top managers in the world, man. I'm, yeah. I'm not going nowhere. That's who I'm with. But, uh, yeah, man, that's how I got out here. My uncle, man, like, he got me out here and he got me this opportunity, bro. I ended up living with him in Dallas. Bro, I've been, I lived in Dallas because we was waiting to get signed by Al Heyman. Then I finally moved in Houston, bro. I moved to Houston, bro. I moved to Houston with $1,500 in my pocket, bro. And my two kids and my ex wife, bro. I moved to Houston with fifteen hundred dollars in my pockets, bro. Stayed in the hood, bro. Like five years ago, we lived in off the, over there off Fondren and Airport Road, bro. Not Fondren and Airport Road, but you Airport Road and um Beltway, like okay, Belfort, yeah. whatever. Belfort. What, Belfort. what is Airport Road and, and West Belfort? Some, and West Belfort, yeah. bro. We lived over there in the hood and University Cross. Some I don't know, but we stayed like where they had roaches and everything, bro. Like we were struggling, bro. Like it was times that me and my ex wife had to split a sandwich, bro. Like, for real. You know what I'm saying? We had to send my kids back home today to their grandparents, bro, because we ain't had nothing, dog. Like, we had, because you know what I'm saying? We ain't want to be struggling like that, bro. You ain't want all us struggling, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, yeah, dog, you know what I'm saying? I came a long way from there. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I dropped everything just to come out here and struggle like that to build myself back up. You know what I'm saying? But here I am. Man, life turned around for me almost a year or two ago, bro. I've been moving up ever since I got rid of all the negative people. All the dead weight, bro. Focused on myself, dog. And I've been going hard ever since. You know what I'm saying? I feel like can't nothing break me. You know what yeah. I mean? Can't nothing break me. And a lot of people don't understand my story. I know my story. You know yeah. what I mean? But can't nothing break me, dog. Like, yeah. straight up. It's like that. And it's just a song. Grinding on my life. Yeah. Hustle All my life, price. bro. I work hard for everything I got, man. You know what I'm saying? I've been through yeah. a lot. Been A lot of doors been closed on me, bro. A lot of people judge me, bro. But I'm just the guy that want to see everybody make it. I'm going to support you if I can. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to see everybody happy. That's just who I am. And I ain't going to change that. No matter what I've been through, no matter, no matter how many people try to take my kindness for a weakness, no matter how many people try to stop me, bro, I am who I am. You know what I'm saying? If anybody if anybody ever been around me, anybody know Darwin Price, bro, I've always been that, that guy that's going to motivate you to get to the next level and make sure you're doing what you got to do to get to the next level. You know what I'm saying? I, and, I, and it ain't me thinking that I'm better than nobody. It's just that's the type of energy I want to give out. If I ever was to leave this earth, I want people to know, like, that's the type of energy I gave out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When they was around. And if and vice versa, if I'm around you and you see something I'm doing, I shouldn't be doing it. I need the same from you. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, straight up. You know what I mean? We got to keep each other on our toes. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. we all we got. You yeah, protect me? ourselves, too. Most you know definitely. Pro so Protect each other. Yeah. So, you know, that's just that's just what it is, bro. I work hard yeah. to get where I am. Can't nobody break me. Ain't nobody going to stop me inside or outside the ring. I'm a boss. Regardless, I'm building my own brand, pay the price. My brand, that's my fight name, pay the price. It's got so much more to do with just boxing, bro. It's right. about, it's a lifestyle, dog. You know what I'm saying? It's about paying the price to get where you want to go in life. To be the best, you're going to have to pay the price. That's real. You got to sacrifice. Gonna be, it's going to be haters. It's going to be obstacles. It's going to be um, people who don't like you for no reason. It's going to be supporters. It's going to be good people. It's going to be people that's going to help you. You know what I'm saying? But... You got to learn how to take all that, use it as a positive, and keep pushing forward to do what you need to do to get to the next level, dog. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just do your good deeds, and I feel like you'll be blessed, dog. You know what I'm saying? While working hard. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because you, you you got some people out here that's just like, God going to do this if you just do this. Man, faith without works is dead, bro. You got to put in the work, too. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. I believe in God. You know what I'm saying? God number one on my list. You feel me? Yeah. But you got to work hard, too. You know what I'm saying? You can't get nowhere. Without work, without working hard, dog. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, I work hard to get where I am, and I ain't gonna let nobody take this from me. Nobody. Man, good fucking show, man. Straight good up. show, good show. Let everybody know where to fight at and what day. Uh, I'm fighting April 13th, man. I'm fighting in uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota at the Ormory, man. I appreciate everybody that supports me, man. Thanks to all my supporters. I want to thank all my sponsors, my team, Al Heyman, man. Hey, I definitely want to give a big thanks to one of my biggest sponsors, man, Muhammad Aziz with Abraham Watkins Law Firm. If y'all got any personal injury lawyers, man, get at Muhammad Aziz, man. I'm telling y'all, like, or hit me up, DM me, inbox me or whatever. And thanks to my other sponsors, Iceman Nick, uh, PSA Vals, Mr. Lido, man, Lido Perez. Thanks to all y'all, man. I appreciate y'all for believing in me, man, when, when I felt like I ain't had nobody, man. Thank you for backing me up. Uh, I won't let y'all down. And, hey, Stay motivated. Stay positive, man. And keep watching your boy. Follow me on Instagram at Darwin Price Jr. Yes, sir. You heard it right there. Real dude with a kill. Great fucking show. Most we definitely. Out. Already. <laughs>